Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. So today, uh, there's going to be background noise. We've got some workers out here working on the roof and there's actually multiple roofers out today on multiple houses. So there's going to be a little bit of extra um, urban homesteading noise today. But we have some exciting additions that I wanted to show you real quickly for Berry Ridge over here. Let me turn you around. Okay, so I've got a little bit of leaf curling here, but um, that's just, they need some, they need some water. They're really, really root bound. But what we have here is a heritage raspberry. And this guy gets about four to five feet tall, one to two foot wide, and it is semi supporting. So we're not going to have to do a whole lot of trellising with this particular variety. So we'll probably just get a basic obelisk and use it on that one probably sometime next year. I'm not anticipating that we're going to need it a whole lot this year. But Okay, so we've got a thornless boysenberry here. Okay. Um, and this guy is loves full sun, five to six feet tall. And it goes down to a minus 20. So... This is going to be absolutely wonderful. I don't know if you've ever had a boysenberry or not, but it is kind of a cross between a blackberry, raspberry, and a blueberry. It's really delightful. It makes wonderful jams and jellies. Plus it's thornless, so my mother's very excited about that <laughs> because basically everything else over here along the berry line has thorns. But, um, you know, you grow what you have to grow to get the fruit that you want, so. <laughs> That's what we're doing. But we've got some spots here that we had already had stuff in. So right here, we had had a raspberry, but something last year had come along and took the plant roots and all, and I don't know what they did with it, but it just completely disappeared. So um, it's just a little bit overgrown with some grass. So all we're gonna do is just clean that spot up and then over here is also a place that we had that blueberry that we've been recovering in the pot. So it just needs to have the grass and all cleared out. And that's where the raspberry will go. And then the boysenberry, since the boysenberry is a bit bigger and needs a little bit more space width wise, we're gonna stick the boysenberry here instead. So we're just swapping places. We will also be using some biotone in each of the holes and then we have a good uh, compost manure blend that is designed to help break up surrounding subsoil because frankly we're working on clay and rock so we need something to help aerate the soil so that they don't get like root bound in the hole and they can push their roots out through everything it just it just helps and then of course we're going to dig out a bit further than the size of the plant pot or even what is required just to make sure that they have the ability to root well but that's the plan for this morning so let me go on ahead and get you onto hyperlapse and we will start getting these guys in definitely need to give them a drink before we put them in but otherwise i think we're pretty well good to go
okay guys, that was a little bit more intensive than we had anticipated. I don't... <laughs> Okay, so what happened was we got that boysenberry in, as you saw there at the end. The raspberry went in fine, but, and we should have done this first. We should have put the obelisk in first before we put the berry in, so that was our bad. Um, and along this ridge, so this ridge over here, let me turn you around, kind of angle you down. Okay, so our ridge here, this is actually part of our dry creek. This is not part of city property at all. Um, we own down here and what the builders did in order to prevent a lot of the water from coming up into the yard proper, they put down this slab all the way to here. But everything that is sitting along the edge over here, well, it's a dry creek bed. <laughs> um, so you have to treat it like a creek. Even if the water's not running, it's still technically a creek bed. And that means there's number one, a lot of hard pan, number two, a lot of rock, number three, more than likely going to be a bunch of clay. And that's exactly what we were hitting because we were going down about 10 inches on the back side of the obelisk. So that's where we were encountering our problem because when I had planted the raspberry plant there, what was that, like two or three years ago now? I wanna say three years ago. Um, yeah, cause it was in 2020. So three years ago, what I had done because this slope here um, was a bit lower uh, so what we did is go in and basically level it up with some of the existing rock that I had already dug up. And so putting in the obelisk means that I had to undig what I had done prior. <laughs> and yeah, that I did a really good job, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I didn't realize how good of a job I did <laughs> until today. So note to self, if you are in an area, you're trying to put in an item like this obelisk or a trellis that is deeper um, and you're dealing with maybe some soil structure that's not so great, you're going to want to make sure and take the time to dig down so that it doesn't come out. Because once that plant grows in, it's going to be heavier and I don't want that trellis to be tipping or flopping or anything. So that's why we wanted to go ahead and get it down the eight to 10 inches. But that means that you do have to dig into the hard pan and kind of just have to suck it up. So we ended up using more soil than we thought. Um, the cotton burr compost is really good. I don't know if you can get it at your local garden center. I know that we have it here at our local garden center where I work, but it's really good at helping to break up compacted soil of all sorts. So if you are someone who has clay or you have rock or just in general bad soil that likes to stick together, the cotton burr compost does help. But as I said, we did end up having to use more of it than I thought we were going to use today. So. It's a good thing that we only ended up with one boysenberry because evidently the other plant that's there is a blackberry. So I'll just take that back um, to work because it's fine. This one boysenberry is gonna, gonna do really, really well for us. So I'm not too worried about it. Now, when I planted the raspberry, um, I did put a palm full of soil acidifier. I did not do that with the boysenberry. Boysenberries tend to like a more balanced pH. Um, blueberries and raspberries they like a little bit of acidity in the soil i didn't do a whole lot of it but i just did a palm full in in the bottom and mixed it with the biotone and then the cotton burr compost and our just native top soil that i mixed into the cotton burr compost to help break things up so that's what we ended up having to do today um yeah so just know if you are setting up a trellis system of any sort, put it in before you put in the plants. 
because we totally had to take out that boysenberry and then put it back. If it lives, it deserves to stay there for life. That's all I can say. <laughs> Bless that little plant's heart. <laughs> we'll go with a southern saying. But that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And as always, guys, keep it simple, natural, and essential. We'll see you on the next video.